In early December of 1993, Kimberly and David Joyce of Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, began preparing for the holidays. Kimberly's twin brother and his family were staying with them at the time, and everyone was looking forward to spending the holidays together. But they could not know it would become a Christmas that none of them would ever forget. I've been told that I have an enormous amount of Christmas decorations. I like to totally decorate the house. I mean, I want it to be a Christmas wonderland for the kids. Kimberly's nine-year-old daughter, Melanie, was helping decorate while her 11-month-old brother, Nathaniel, watched. I just love to have him around. To me, it seems like he loves everybody. I was told in 1988 that I would not be able to have any more children. But when David and I fell in love, we were able to have Nathaniel. He's our miracle baby. He's the baby I was told I'd never have. Nathaniel has a sensitive reflexer. It's where he easily gags excessively to the point of sometimes passing out. We decided to put the artificial tree up because we didn't want the pine needles all over the floor. With the real Christmas tree, Nathaniel could pick these needles and could swallow them and they could get hung in his throat. Around 6 p.m. on December 9th, Kimberly's sister-in-law, Mary Miller, was preparing dinner. I'm going to get started on my stuff so I can get it done yeah, in time. Okay. I'm going to put Nathaniel down here so he can watch Barney with you. I vacuum the floor every day, sometimes a couple of times a day, because Nathaniel tries to eat everything that he can get his hands on. My first thought was it was just his reflexor, that there was nothing really, really to be alarmed about. And that's when I put my finger in his mouth, and I could feel metal in the back of his throat. I gave the baby blows on the back. But whatever it was was stuck, and I couldn't get it out myself. I'll never forget the look on his face. I'll never forget the look in his eyes. Would please help me, Mommy. And I couldn't help him. Atlantic Beach 911. Where is your emergency? 201. Ma'am, calm down. Atlantic Beach Police Dispatcher Pamela Hansen took the call. When people start screaming at you, your adrenaline level goes up. You know there's the possibility of somebody's life is in danger. All right, hold on. Atlantic Beach, 1018, code 2. Kimberly's twin brother, Henry, came in to help. Kimberly was very hysterical. I wasn't sure if they could understand what she was telling them because I couldn't hardly understand it. Hello? Hello? Yeah, she's got metal in his throat. Metal? Yeah, he's got something metal in his throat. Okay, hold on. Atlanta Beach Squad 35, color and vice. The infant has swallowed a metallic object. He's passing out. He's passing out? You gotta hurry. His eyes were swelling, his face was swelling. You're holding your baby and he's not breathing. At that point, my heart practically stopped because when he's not breathing, that indicates possible death. Being a child, not knowing what to do, and then an adult not knowing what to do either, scared me. I loved him more than anything. Okay, is he, how old is he? He's 30. 12 months old. 12 months? Yes. 
You want somebody else to make you feel like that you're overreacting and that your child's not dying, you're just thinking that. But the look in their faces told me that it wasn't just me. The first rescue worker to arrive was police officer Bud Sheldon. Emotions were running high. He was not moving at all. No breathing, no crying, nothing. His chances of life were starting to falter. So I flipped him over onto his stomach and gave him a couple of back blows. Who's crying? Who's crying? I hear a baby crying. Okay, he's not unconscious now? There's something in his throat that's cutting his throat. He was actually trying to throw the object back up, but he was just throwing up a lot of blood. I couldn't imagine what he had swallowed that cut him. He's not unconscious. They should be there now, sir. Okay, bye. Within four minutes of the call, Atlantic Beach EMS arrived, including EMT and Murdoch. Because the baby's airway is small, even though there was air going past the object at that time, there was no assurance to us that, you know, whatever it was would not close it off again. Once we got in the back of the ambulance, we discovered that if he put the baby upright or turned it on his back, it couldn't breathe. So we knew we had to get to the hospital fast. We know with a baby, we don't have a lot of time. He's, why is he pulling away? He's pulling away! The ambulance then started racing. Their siren went on, and they just took off. I was afraid he was dying. I'm not already dead. Nathaniel was rushed to Carteret General Hospital. Pediatrician John Knelson took over his care. When I asked the uh, EMT people there what had happened, they said, when we lay him on his back, he quits breathing. You have to be careful not to dislodge or move the object while you're trying to find it, and therefore precipitate a catastrophe while you're trying to fix the situation. I decided the best thing to do would be to get an x-ray to see if we could identify the object so we could go after it in a more planned way, rather than just fishing for it. Hi, are you Nathaniel's mom and dad? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, I'm Dr. Knelson. I was frightened when I saw the x-ray. This is a potentially disastrous situation. But you recognize this, don't you? Yes. You don't have to be a radiologist to read this film. He had swallowed the end of a Christmas bowl. I don't know how he ever could have swallowed such an item, but there it sat, plain as day. Thoracic specialist Richard Ray was called in to perform the procedure to remove the object. When I looked, I saw the part of the ornament with the hole was sitting right in the baby's larynx, so that the baby was actually breathing through this little hole. To stand there helplessly and listen to your son crying, screaming out, and to know that there's nothing you can do but wait and hope. That was the hardest thing that I had to deal with. It took a little finagling and twisting and maneuvering to, to get a hold of that spring. And when we were able to get a hold of both legs and pull them together, that released it from the tissue and it came out quite easily. Oh, oh boy, Man. look at that. Oh. When you get that out, it's like um, the hallelujah chorus. Everybody in the emergency room cheers, and it's a good time. Wow. Okay. Everything is okay. Everything's going to be all right. I just looked at the nurse, and she kind of handed me Nathaniel. <laughs> when I found out that Nathaniel was going to be okay, I was running through the house, jumping for joy. I was, like, hugging everybody. I was just twirling them around. I was happy. Nathaniel was released from the hospital the next day without any permanent injury. Nathaniel has had his first birthday. He's learning to walk now. All the things you anticipate, but could have easily been taken from us. I love my son very much. And I wish there was some way the police, the ambulance people, 
the physicians could realize the appreciation we feel. And I am deeply indebted to all of those that were involved. If the mother had not dialed 911, the baby might not be here today. Everyone should know how to dial 911. It's only three little numbers. I mean, small children can remember that. If they can remember their phone number, they can remember 911. It really is necessary to baby-proof a home, to keep small objects that could be swallowed out of a baby's reach particularly around the holiday season when there are extra people and extra decorations. Parents need to be extra careful. I keep this bulb top with me at all times. It's a reminder to me to make sure that you never take any moment in life for granted. Life is about living and enjoying and sharing and loving. And love is all there is. Got another kiss? I think the Joyce family probably received the best Christmas present any parents can ever receive. The life of their baby. Do it, huh? <laughs> <laughs>